Hello all, I'm Dr. Neema Bhatt, Senior Consultant Hematologist, Pediatric Oncologist and Bone Marrow Transplant Physician. I'm also the di- Director of the Bone Marrow Transplant Unit at Bhagwan Mahavir Jain Hospitals in Bangalore. Today is uh, a day I would like to address about hemophilia. So many of you would not have ter- heard about the term hemophilia. Uh, why is it? Uh, because April is also celebrated as, April 17th is celebrated as um, World Hemophilia Awareness Month. So what is hemophilia and uh, how is it, what are the symptoms associated with it and how is it diagnosed? These are the things I'll try to touch upon in today's video. Hemophilia is nothing but a bleeding disorder. So we have learned in one of our earlier videos what bleeding disorders are. Uh, Hemophilia is a specific type of bleeding disorders. So the clotting factors that are required to help us make a clot, uh, the deficiency of these clotting factors is usually called hemophilia. There are three different types of hemophilia, A, B, and a very less known type called hemophilia C. So hemophilia A is the deficiency of a particular type of clotting factor, which is factor 8. Hemophilia B is deficiency of factor 9, and hemophilia C is deficiency of factor 12. Hemophilia A and B can be associated with very severe bleeding, sometimes even with life-threatening bleeding, so something that can actually be risky to life. Why is it important to know about hemophilia? Just as I mentioned, if these factors, clotting factors are deficient in people, they can be at risk for life-threatening bleeding. So how is it that we diagnose hemophilia? Most often, hemophilia is diagnosed by a pediatric hematologist, and it is done when parents bring their children with symptoms of either swelling in the joint, uh, uh, bruises that are unexplained, bluish patches uh, that are unexplained, uh, sometimes bleeding from the gums, but most often it is bruising or um, swelling of the joints, painful joints, uh, restricted movements in the joints. These symptoms usually start when the baby starts uh, you know, crawling or uh, walking and they tend to fall and hurt themselves. And when there is pressure on the joints, that is when these symptoms are noticed. What do we do to diagnose it? So first we start with a detailed history. It's very important to get a history if there is a bleeding history or there is a, there a history of hemophilia or some sort of a bleeding disorder in the family. So it's always important for us to know our family's history, um, at least up to the first circle, which is your siblings, um, your first aunts and uncles and grandparents. And if they've had any issues with excessive bleeding, either during or before a surgery that was diagnosed. Once the history is known, we examine the patient to see if there is any swelling in the joint or if there is any uh, excessive bruising that cannot be explained by the activity of the patient or the child. If there is a suspicion based on the family history and on the examination, then we send blood tests. So there are simple blood tests, um, they are called PT, AKTT, INR, which basically try to pick up, they are like a screening test to see if there might be a bleeding disorder. And if there is an abnormality on these tests or if there is something really concerning on the history, then we send for deficiency or testing for the levels of these particular factors. So usually we test for factor 8, factor 9, and sometimes in rare cases if there is a significant history but the screening blood tests don't show anything, we test for something called factor 13. If the factor deficiency is found, then a detailed care plan for the patient needs to be made. Um, We have to educate them about how to make sure the child does not hurt themselves, how cushioning can be provided so that there is not much pressure in the joints to prevent joint bleeding mainly, because joint bleeding can be something that can cause a life debilitating um, handicap or uh, sort of uh, swelling in the joint can restrict movements for a long time. These patients require physiotherapy on a regular basis. Most importantly, they require regular replacement of factors. So factor 8 and factor 9 are available as recombinant factors and these factors need to be procured at the right time. Factor 8 needs to be given as prophylactic therapy if the patient has severe deficiency almost once every, uh, almost three, three times, two to three times a week. And factor 9 needs to be given at least once to two times a week, depending on what is the level of deficiency. Factor 12 usually is not associated with very um, uh, severe bleeding disorder. Hemophilia C is not um, associated with severe bleeding. However, if the patient is planned for a surgery or a dentalist extraction, then factor 12 replacement may need to be given. I hope the short video has given you some knowledge about hemophilia. For more details, feel free to seek out and um, seek consultation from a hematologist. Thank you.